When I awoke, I was lying on a hospital gurney in the emergency room of Baylor Hospital in Dallas, the same hospital I was born in 25 years earlier. The first two people I saw were my parents, together in the same room for the first time in five or six years, dealing with my situation and each other at the same time. A doctor leaned over and tried to make me swallow a handful of small white pills. My mouth was too dry and I threw up almost immediately. My father appeared very concerned and the bright white lights in the ER were making all the images blend hard into a soup of weird color and abstract noise. My mom was crying. What happened to me, I asked to no one in particular. Where am I? My father looked really weird. What did you take, Jeffrey? I didn't take anything. I really had no idea where I was. I saw a friend of mine who plays for a metal band talking to a nurse. What's Turner doing here, I asked. I remember thinking that that was probably the first time my father had ever seen somebody with a full body tattoo. My mom looked at me and said, this guy was driving, he was the guy that probably saved your life. He was the one that, geez, I thought, what, saved my life? What the fuck happened to me? I looked down and saw blood stains all over my pants, the front of my shirt, my favorite meat puppet shirt, was ripped straight down the middle. Turner walked over and stood next to my dad. My father repeated his question to see if my friend might, might help give him some kind of answer. Son, what did you take? Turner, who was about six years of sobriety under his belt, quickly jumped to my fence. Sir, he wasn't on anything, I swear to you. We were on our way back from the guitar store. We were on our way to practice. Your son was in the back seat and out of nowhere, he just started flipping around, spitting and choking and kicking on the inside of the car door. I swear, he didn't take anything. My dad wasn't buying it. Just then, a doctor came walking in with the results of my blood test. It was quickly that concluded that, indeed, I hadn't taken anything. I wasn't an OD victim. Turner added an additional two cents. I could have told you that. I was with him all day. We picked him up. We went to breakfast. The only thing he kept saying was he was having deja vu every time someone would say something on the radio. It was kind of a running joke all morning. Do you remember that, Jeff? Man, I don't remember anything. How long have I been asleep, I said. The doctor looked at me and smiled. You haven't exactly been asleep. You've been having a series of grandma seizures all afternoon. I'm going to hand you a mirror, and I want you to tell me the full name of the person you see. Okay? Yeah, sure, no problem. Then he handed me the mirror. The shock of what I saw ignited an emotional H-bomb. I started crying uncontrollably, actually the first time I'd cried in eight years. I had a black eye, the side of my face was swollen and I'd bitten off the end of my tongue. For a second, I hoped the person in the mirror was someone else. Who did this to me, I asked. Turner looked at me and said, man, nobody did anything to you. You started bugging out in the back seat of my car, you scared the shit out of all of us, man. My mom put her hand on Turner's arm, offered a heartfelt thank you for taking the initiative to get me to the hospital. My father refused to believe that I would end ended up in a hospital for any other reason than a drug overdose. He never really liked my dreadlocks either. Doctor, do you think that his hair had anything to do with this, he said. The doctor tried to explain that what had happened was that I had had an epileptic seizure and that it might be a condition I was going to have to learn to live with. So now I am.